What if SpaceX just tested game-changing technology on Flight 10 that NASA doesn't even know exists? While everyone celebrated the successful landing, three mysterious metallic tiles were secretly conducting the most important experiment in Starship history. Not the standard ceramic ones, something completely different. The orange streak down Starship's side? That wasn't damage. That was proof of concept for technology NASA abandoned 50 years ago, believing it impossible. But SpaceX didn't stop there. They also tested their secret weapon, the crunch wrap, a revolutionary sealing method that could finally solve the reusable heat shield puzzle that stumped engineers for decades. Let's dive right in. Picture this, August 26th, SpaceX's most critical moment. After three consecutive failures, Flight 10 wasn't just another test, it was make or break time. NASA's Artemis III mission, humanity's return to the moon, hung in the balance. But while the world watched for explosions, SpaceX was conducting something far more revolutionary. Those three metallic tiles weren't random. They were the resurrection of technology NASA studied extensively in the 1970s but ultimately abandoned as too complex for the era. What NASA couldn't achieve with 1970s technology, SpaceX believed they could crack with modern engineering. The genius? While everyone focused on the 18,000 standard ceramic tiles, SpaceX was testing the foundation of truly reusable spacecraft. Not just reusable boosters, we've seen that. We're talking about something no human has ever achieved, a heat shield that survives orbital re-entry, lands and flies again without months of refurbishment. Here's what nobody's talking about. The space shuttle program cost $196 billion over 30 years, and every single orbiter required nine months of heat shield repairs after each flight. Nine months, that's not reusability. That's rebuilding a spacecraft every mission. SpaceX's Bill Gerstenmaier, Former NASA Associate Administrator revealed the shocking truth at the Glenn Space Technology Symposium. Those metallic tiles oxidized extremely nice in the high oxygen environment, creating that distinctive orange streak. But here's the twist. This wasn't failure. This was data collection on an unprecedented scale. Think about it. SpaceX deliberately exposed these tiles to plasma temperatures exceeding 1,650 degrees Celsius, hypersonic speeds of Mach 25, and the most brutal environment imaginable, the orange oxidation? That's pure intelligence on how metals behave in conditions that would vaporize most materials instantly. But the metallic tiles were just the opening act. The real revolution was happening underneath. Literally, SpaceX engineers discovered that their biggest enemy wasn't the plasma itself, but the gaps between tiles. Even microscopic spaces allowed superheated gas to penetrate, burning away protective layers and creating those telltale white patches visible on Flight 10's hull. Traditional solutions? NASA used gap fillers, small ceramic pieces wedged between tiles. Sounds simple, right? Wrong. These fillers regularly failed, popped out during flight, and created dangerous turbulence that actually increased heating. The Space Shuttle Columbia disaster taught us how deadly even small heat shield compromises can be. SpaceX's answer? The crunch wrap. And yes, that's the actual technical term their engineers use. Imagine wrapping each individual tile like a present before installation. The wrapping material forms a perfect seal around the tile's edges, then gets trimmed flush with the surface. No gaps, no fillers, no failure points. This isn't just clever. It's revolutionary. Each of those 18,000 tiles becomes its own sealed unit, immune to the thermal expansion and contraction that creates gaps in traditional systems. Let me put this in perspective. The Space Shuttle's heat shield used approximately 24,000 individual tiles, each requiring manual inspection and frequent replacement. The average cost? $200 million per shuttle refurbishment. Starship? Over 18,000 hexagonal tiles. But here's the kicker. SpaceX is targeting zero refurbishment between flights, not reduced maintenance, zero. That would drop operational costs from hundreds of millions to potentially under $10 million per launch. But wait, there's more. Version three, Starship launching next year 
will carry over 100 tons to orbit. That's double the space shuttle's payload capacity at a fraction of the cost, with theoretically unlimited reuse cycles. Speaking of version 3, let's talk about what's really driving this transformation. The new Raptor 3 engines aren't just more powerful, they're fundamentally different. SpaceX eliminated the external heat shields that protected earlier Raptor engines during re-entry. Instead, they're using regenerative cooling, circulating super-cold methane through internal channels to keep the engine cool. It's like liquid armor flowing through the engine's veins. The result? Each Raptor 3 costs approximately $500,000 to manufacture using advanced 3D printing techniques. Compare that to the Space Shuttle's main engines, which cost $40 million each and required complete rebuilds after every flight. 33 Raptor 3 engines on Super Heavy generate 9,000 tons of thrust. To put that in perspective, that's equivalent to 32 Boeing 747s taking off simultaneously. This isn't just an engine upgrade. It's a paradigm shift toward aircraft-like operations in space. But engines are just part of the story. Version 3 introduces grid fins that look like gigantic waffles. Elon's words, not mine. These aren't cosmetic changes. The new fins are 50% larger, but fewer in number. Three octagonal fins instead of four square ones. Each fin weighs three tons and doubles as part of the rocket's catching system. This means the booster can be caught, refueled, and relaunched within hours, not weeks. The engineering brilliance? These fins will experience forces equivalent to catching a falling skyscraper while maintaining precise control. The structural reinforcements alone represent a masterclass in aerospace engineering. Here's where it gets emotional. We're not just talking about better rockets. We're witnessing the birth of true space transportation. For 60 years, every spacecraft has been essentially disposable. Even reusable vehicles required extensive refurbishment. SpaceX is targeting airline-level operations. Land, refuel, launch. That's never been achieved in human history. The implications? Mars missions become economically viable. Space stations the size of cities become possible. Asteroid mining shifts from science fiction to business plan. But first, they have to solve the heat shield puzzle. And based on Flight 10's hidden experiments, they're closer than anyone imagines. Here's the part that should make NASA engineers lose sleep. SpaceX gathered more heat shield data in one flight than the shuttle program collected in decades. Those failed metallic tiles provided precise measurements of oxidation rates, thermal conductivity, and structural integrity under real hypersonic conditions. NASA spent billions on laboratory simulations that could never replicate the complex interactions of orbital reentry. SpaceX just flew the experiment at Mach 25 through actual plasma and recorded everything. The white patches visible after landing? Those aren't damage indicators. They're thermal measurement points. SpaceX deliberately removed tiles in specific locations to test how heat penetrates the underlying structure. It's like performing surgery on a moving patient to understand how the body responds to trauma. Flight 11, launching potentially this October, will test the crunch wrap system under operational conditions. If successful, version 3 debuts next year with the goal of reaching orbit and demonstrating complete reusability. But here's the timeline that should terrify SpaceX's competitors. Orbital refueling demonstration in 2026. Artemis 3 lunar landing in mid-2027. That's less than three years to prove technology that's never worked before. The pressure is immense. NASA's entire lunar program depends on SpaceX delivering. Commercial space companies worldwide are watching. The first organization to achieve true spacecraft reusability wins the space economy. You might be thinking, cool rockets, but how does this affect my life? Global internet from space constellations becomes dirt cheap when launch costs drop from $200 million to $10 million. Weather prediction improves dramatically with more satellites. Climate monitoring becomes comprehensive and affordable. Medical research in zero gravity accelerates when getting to space costs less than a cross-country flight. Manufacturing in space, impossible with expensive launches, suddenly becomes viable for specialized materials. And yes, space tourism shifts from billionaire privilege to middle-class vacation when tickets drop from $55 million to potentially under $100,000. Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic, even national space agencies. 
They're all fighting yesterday's war. They're building better disposable rockets or marginally reusable systems. SpaceX is building tomorrow's technology today. While others focus on incremental improvements, SpaceX is solving fundamental problems that have stumped aerospace engineers since the dawn of spaceflight. The Crunchwrap system alone could be licensed to other space companies for billions in revenue. But more likely, SpaceX will keep this competitive advantage and dominate the launch market for the next decade. What do you think? Is SpaceX really solving the reusability puzzle? Or are they overpromising again? Drop your thoughts below. And if this breakdown opened your eyes to what's really happening in space, share this video with someone who needs to see the future being built right now. Here's the truth that should keep you awake tonight. While you watch Flight 10 succeed, SpaceX was secretly testing technology that could make space travel as routine as air travel within a decade. Those three metallic tiles in the crunch wrap system weren't just experiments. They were the first steps toward a space economy worth trillions. The orange streak wasn't damage. It was proof that humanity is finally cracking the code to true space reusability. But here's what excites me most. We're witnessing history being written in real time. Every flight brings us closer to Mars colonies, space manufacturing, and adventures beyond our wildest dreams. Want to stay ahead of the space revolution? Hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Because future space is where we break down the moves that change everything before they become headlines. And if this blew your mind, you need to see our deep dive into Starship version 3's insane upgrades. It's dropping next week, and trust me, you're not ready for what's coming. SpaceX just fired up Booster 15 for what could be the final block, two static tests ever. And Flight 11 is targeting October launch. This marks the end of an era before Block 3 takes over completely. But here's what's fascinating. Why rush this last Block 2 mission when they're so close to next-gen vehicles? The answer reveals SpaceX's bigger strategy that most are missing. We'll unpack the real timeline, what makes this final Block 2 flight critical, and why October could be make or break for Starship's evolution. Booster 15's static fire wasn't just another test. It was a 70-meter-tall farewell to an entire generation of Starship technology. Standing roughly the height of a 20-story building, this massive booster represents the culmination of everything SpaceX learned from their early Starship flights. But here's what few people realize. This wasn't supposed to be the last Block 2 booster at all. The engineering challenge SpaceX faced was unprecedented. Think of it like upgrading from a prototype sports car to a production model while you're still racing the prototype. They had to keep Block 2 operational while simultaneously developing Block 3, a completely different beast that requires new launch infrastructure. The static fire process alone reveals the complexity. Over 30 minutes of cryogenic propellant loading with liquid methane and oxygen flowing through systems that must operate at temperatures of minus 162 degrees Celsius that would freeze most materials solid. What makes this particularly fascinating is the infrastructure gymnastics SpaceX performed. They literally had to invent temporary components, the quick disconnect adapter and launch mount adapter, just to test ship 38 on pad one. It's like building a custom bridge just to move one last car across a river before demolishing the old road. These makeshift solutions took enormous engineering effort for what amounts to maybe two uses total. And here's what most engineers don't appreciate. Creating temporary hardware that can handle the extreme forces of Raptor engines is arguably harder than building permanent solutions. The technical specifications tell the real story. Booster 15 has already flown on Flight Test 8, making it only the second super heavy to ever be reflown. Those scorch marks visible on its top section? They're battle scars from reaching the edge of space at velocities exceeding 1,600 miles per hour. Meanwhile, Ship 38 features the revolutionary crunch wrap heat shield design, essentially white cloth cutouts that wrap around tiles to fill gaps and prevent the 1,400 degrees Celsius heat of re-entry from seeping through to the vehicle structure. And here's the detail most people overlook. SpaceX refers to these heat shield improvements 
by the oddly casual name Crunch Wraps, like the Taco Bell item. But don't let the playful naming fool you. Bill Gerstenmeier, SpaceX's VP of Build and Flight Reliability, confirmed these improvements led to the heat shield on Flight 10 staying almost entirely attached. A massive leap forward from earlier flights where tiles scattered like confetti during the landing flip maneuver. The timeline itself reveals SpaceX's extraordinary pace. Just 10 days after Flight 10, Booster 15 was rolling out for static fire testing. To put this in perspective, NASA's Space Shuttle program required months between flights, and even SpaceX's own Falcon Heavy takes weeks to prepare between missions. But there's something even more remarkable happening. While conducting these rapid tests, SpaceX simultaneously removed all 20 booster hold-down clamps and installed ship-specific hardware, essentially reconfiguring their launch infrastructure in real time. The logistics alone are staggering. Moving a 70-meter booster requires precise choreography. Watch the grid fins rotate as it enters Mega Bay 1. That's not just for show. Those fins must be positioned perfectly to avoid collision with the bay entrance, then rotated back for storage. It's like parking a skyscraper in a garage, except the skyscraper has been to space and back. But this is just the beginning. What's really surprising is how this final mission reveals SpaceX's broader strategy that nobody else in the industry is attempting. While everyone's focused on Block 2 ending, SpaceX is actually orchestrating a calculated transition that positions them years ahead of competitors. This isn't just about retiring old technology, it's about maintaining launch momentum while upgrading their entire operational foundation. And here's what few people realize. This transition strategy is so aggressive that it's forcing every other space company to reconsider their development timelines. Consider the competitive landscape in stark numbers. Blue Origin's New Glenn has been in development for over a decade and still hasn't flown. NASA's SLS costs $4.1 billion per launch and requires 18 to 24 months between missions. ULA's Vulcan has managed two flights in two years. Meanwhile, SpaceX is conducting static fires just 10 days after their previous flight. That's not just fast. It's redefining what operational means in heavy lift spaceflight. The October timeline for Flight 11 represents something no other company has achieved, rapid iteration on the world's most powerful rocket. But there's an economic dimension here that changes everything. The $17 billion Starlink Echo Star deal announced this week isn't coincidental timing. SpaceX